Today, um, God's led me to talk with you about something that we all face, and that is um, ongoing battles. Ongoing battles. When I, I guess if I was to give you a definition of ongoing battles, it's just simply, um, you know, first of all, not just small things in your life. Things that just really, really are, 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 are big deals, um, but, but battles that are ongoing. You know, they're not something that just lasts a day or, or just lasts a, a, a week, but they are constantly in front of you. Today, maybe your battle is physical. Uh, maybe it's mental. Uh, maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's relational. Um, maybe it's um, all of the above. Um, and maybe it's spiritual. Uh, I, I think it's important that you understand any time that you come to God's Word that our greatest battle is always spiritual. Because our greatest battle is having the best relationship we can have with God. And either, either we have the best relationship, you know, and are as close as we could be to Him, or, or we're trying to pursue closeness with Him, but maybe we don't feel closeness with Him. Listen, a battle that, that's in your, in your view and in your heart and in your mind or in the back of your mind, even when you want to run away from it. That's the battles that we're going to be talking about today. God's Word talks a lot about different battles and how we should deal with them and, and how they affect us. If you got your worship guide, I want you to take notes with me, and, and I'll go ahead and say in advance, there's a point number five. You've got to tell my, um, one of my boys that, that, that there's a point number five. And uh, so you can go ahead and put that down there, and you'll realize when we get to, to the number five, why Satan tried to keep that outside the worship guide. It's the first time this ever happened. The first thing you need to see today is that ongoing battles, they can knock you down. Ongoing battles, they can knock you down. The longer something sticks around, the more it wears you down. The more Satan has the potential to knock you down. There's always some battle going on in our lives, and, and here's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants it to, to knock the breath out of you, knock the life out of you. Psalm 143 verse 3 says, my enemy has chased me. He has knocked me to the ground and forces me to live in darkness like those in the grave. Now, maybe you don't feel that dark right now. Maybe you do. But that's what happens after Satan just pounds and pounds and pounds on us with something, and it wears us out almost to the point to where we just give up hope. A very blessed man of God, it's important for you to note this part, a very blessed man of God named Job was always strong in his faith and very, very happy until he was hit with a series of battles that, that threatened his daily peace. He had everything. And the Bible says he was one of the best people that, that, that existed at that time. And yet, when a series of battles came at him, it knocked him down. I want to read to you something that Job's friends said to him as they came alongside him in some of his griefs. Job 4, verse 3 through 5, it says, in the past, Job, you've encouraged many people. You have strengthened those who were weak. Your words have supported those who were falling. You encourage those with shaky knees. But now when trouble strikes, you lose heart. You are terrified, listen to this, when it touches you. How many of you have ever encouraged someone or prayed for someone that was going through a battle? How many of you know it's easier to pray for someone else's battle? I have personally before found myself in such dark places that I had to go, am I going to practice what I preach? Am I going to believe myself what I would tell someone else, you know, such as God has a plan. God is there for you. You know, this, this, you can get through this. You can get past this. But see, we're all human. We're all human and we're all very vulnerable. I've always said it's much easier to pray for others than to go through something yourself. Our enemy, the devil, he is always looking for a window. I want some of you to hear this, that he's always looking for a window. And that one thing you have to try to, this is the one thing you can control. Seek to stay so close to God and so in tune spiritually that you don't get caught napping. 
Many people don't realize that the reason why they, um, all of a sudden something seems like it's just a surprise out of nowhere is because they were not in tune to see the signs before it came seemingly out of nowhere. Our enemy, the devil, always looking for a window to knock us down, to keep us down. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Listen, the only way you can get through certain battles and, and, and not just um, be knocked down and kept down the rest of your life is you've got to choose to that no matter what, you're going to um, now, this day forward, stand firm in your faith says, remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of sufferings you are. So after you've suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. Notice it does not say you'll put yourself on a firm foundation. He will put you on that. He will take you through this. A lot of times we're guilty. We will give God the battle on Sunday and take it right back on Monday. And, and, and so oftentimes, listen, the reason we don't feel the same on Monday as we feel on Sunday is because we're not li listening to him or seeking him near as much. So you've got to keep seeking. You've got to stay alert because the devil's looking and saying, hey, who's letting down their guard? Who's thinking that I'm not real? Who's thinking I'm on top of the world? Nothing could take me down. I see God, see God letting people like that day after day just just collapse. All of a sudden, there's just a a a, 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 a just a glimpse of who they used to be because they experienced the battle that was too big for them. Maybe you had this happen to you, but you weren't firm in your faith, and so it absolutely devastated you. James chapter 4, verse 10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. You say, if you were to ask me, what's the, what, what can I do, what should I do first, outside of having trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, what should I do to deal with life's toughest battles and with life, period? I would say, get down on your knees. Not just out of saying, God, please bail me out, but God, take over my life. I humble everything to you. Forgive me for not giving you the reins before, God, no matter what, from this point forward, I'm going with you. Because see what I see with people, I see people, they try to seek the Lord for a season, and then when the Lord doesn't do things as quickly as they want them to, him to do things, or, or exactly as they want him to do things, they just leave. They just quit seeking the Lord. They're like, man, you know what, I don't have time for this. Listen, everything you've got depends on God's grace and his mercies in your life. I have too much of a healthy fear of the Lord to not seek the Lord and his will. You know, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you don't have a healthy, when you don't care what God thinks, you're in a bad place. When you don't, when you don't care most what God thinks, you are not in a right relationship with God. You're still trying to call the shots. You're still going with the flow. And you're still doing just what everybody else is doing. I want, to, I want to share this with you. God gave this to me that ongoing battles, they are always different when they are in our own lives. They, they knock us down when we least expect it. Therefore, we must stay alert spiritually because our enemy is always looking to knock us down and to take us down. I often say that, that you need to catch the cancer early. Let's catch it in stage one. Let's not let things continue to unravel. See the signs. Hear God's voice. Pursue him now and often. But secondly, ongoing battles, they can discourage you greatly. Ongoing battles can discourage you greatly. More weary you get over something, more tired you get of looking at something, the more helpless you feel about something, the, the more um, discouragement sets in. And the first thing that creeps in is anxiety. And Proverbs 12, 25 says anxiety weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. I'm hoping today that you'll hear um, not just what um, battles are and how they can affect you in a bad way, 
but what God can do even in the midst of them. Job, the most suffering prophet we read about in Scripture, he wasn't just knocked down by his own going battles. He felt as low as a man could possibly feel. And this man had everything. Job 29, verses 1 through 7. It says, I long for the years gone by when God took care of me, when he lit up the way before me and I walked safely through the darkness. When I was in my prime, God's friendship was felt in my home. The Almighty was still with me and my children were around. Those were the days. Job 30, verse 1 says, But now I am mocked by people. Verse 11, For God has cut my bowstring. He has humbled me. Verse 16 says, And now my life seeps away. Depression haunts my days. At night my bones are filled with pain, which gnaw at me relentlessly. I cry to you, O oh God, but you don't answer me. I stand before you, but you don't even look. You have, been, you have become cruel towards me. You use your power to persecute me. My heart is troubled and restless. Days of suffering torment me. I walk in gloom without sunlight. My heart plays sad music. I, I, I just had to include that piece about the sad music. I've always been one of those that, that, that for some reason I like to hear sad songs. I mean, maybe you're just like me. We just need to be in a room, play all the sad songs we can play. I can remember even as a young child, if I was feeling down about something or thinking about something deeply, I made sure that I was playing the saddest song you could ever find. I would, I would wait. I would, some of y'all don't even know about tape players, okay? That's, that's, by the way, that's one sign. I know I'm Jeff Foxworthy got the signs that you might be a redneck if, but... If you remember VHS tapes, if you remember cassette tapes, and even some of you, if you remember an actual CD, you're getting old, okay? I want you to look at your neighbor, if that's you, and I want you to say, listen, help me, God, I'm old. Okay? Confession is healing. I don't believe I've ever asked anybody that, something like that, except in my living room. My wife really wishes I would just leave the stupidity at home. But I keep telling her just what my youngest son says. It's just the way God made me. I'm just a little bit off, okay? But I hope that, I hope that softened you up. But I, but I say this to you. Can't you identify with being in a real, 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 real sad place and how, you know, you just, you need somebody to play the violin and, and you just, you, you're just, you're like Kermit. It's not easy being green. Listen, the longer we face a battle, the more discouraged we become. The longer we feel discouraged, the more depressed we, we become. And listen, Satan wants to steal your joy, and he wants to steal your peace. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he says, my purpose is to give them a rich and, and satisfying life. Other translations says, I have come so that you can have life to the fullest a life worth living, a life worth looking forward to. That doesn't mean you don't have hardships, but it, it means you can still have peace. You can still have purpose, even in the midst of pain. John 16, Jesus says, You may have peace in me. Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. Listen, our past days of struggles often seem in our heads easier than our present day struggles. The longer our battle goes on, the longer each day feels. We, we can become very weary and worn and discouraged. And if we see no end in sight, we get depressed. We get depressed and, and depression comes knocking at our door. And, and this is definitely what Satan hopes will happen is that, that you get blindsided, that you don't, you don't take up your cross and follow him and you don't, you don't lean into your faith you just completely continue to fall apart because of what you feel in your flesh. But thirdly, ongoing battles, they can truly test your faith. Ongoing battles, it doesn't matter who it is, truly test your faith. When we read the book of Job, 
we learn that regardless of our integrity, regardless of our relationship with God, regardless of how long we've been a Christian, suffering is unavoidable. You need to write that down and remember that. It's not because that's like a high point, but you need to understand suffering is unavoidable in this life. If it isn't what you're suffering now, it'll be something new that you're suffering later. Longer you live, the more things you've suffered. That's, that's, the, that's one of the prices to, to, to um, getting older. I can hear some of you right now saying, well, yay me. And, and listen, just because you got high mileage on rough roads, sometimes that just gets you just ripe and ready. God can actually use you now because you're not so, you, you, you expect trials. You understand that difficulty is a part of life. And so, so you're just focused on keeping the faith regardless of life's disappointments. I want to read to you just a few select verses about Job so that you can see how his faith was allowed by God to be tested. Job 1 says, There once was a man named Job who lived in the land of us. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and he stayed away from evil. He, he had seven sons and three daughters. Ten children, that's, 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 that's a lot. But he had more than that. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. And he was, in fact, the richest person in that entire area. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from, the Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and he stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. Scripture goes on to tell us that all in one day, he lost all 11,000 of his livestock, he lost all of his farm hands, and he lost all seven sons and three daughters. I would call that a really bad day. Verse 20 says, Job stood up, he tore his robe in grief, then he shaved his head and he fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin, blaming God. Now, I want you to hear this. It does not mean that Job did not cry. It did not mean that Job did not grieve. It's just that he still believed that God was good and that God had a plan. Sadly, Job's suffering and testing of faith, it didn't stop here. This would have been enough. Job 2, 3 through 10, it says, Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God, stays away from evil, and he has maintained his integrity, even though you urged me to harm him without cause. Satan replied to the Lord, Skin for skin, a man will give up everything he has to save his life, but reach out and take away his health, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right. Do with him as you please, the Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. Verse 7 says, so Satan left the Lord's presence, and he struck Job with terrible boils from head to foot. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all of this, Job said nothing wrong. 
Listen, none of us really know what faith is and means until faith is all we have. Would you agree? Each of us are experiencing always a test of faith in a battle that we've never faced before. So, so you, you just look at your life. You got a new battle. You know how to, you know how to get through battles that maybe you, you've already been through, but you don't know how to get through the present battle because you can only see what you see. But listen, the scripture is very clear that if we hold on to Jesus and we keep the faith, we will make it to the other side of whatever is, is, is battling us. I often think about a lady that um, um, I was the hospice chaplain to for her husband. And, um, and not only did he pass away, but she had an 18-year-old that um, uh, had no health is- issues before, dropped dead of a heart attack. She had a 22-year-old who was in the Air Force, served, served our country in, I think, Afghanistan, and he came back to Yemassee, and he was killed by somebody he didn't even know for a $20 bill. So my question to her was like, how in the world? How am I seeing this person I'm seeing? Because she was a strong warrior of faith. And I said, ma'am, you got to tell me so I can share this secret with others. I I said, normally I don't see people bounce back like I've seen you do. I said, how did you get over it? And she grabbed my shirt and she said, Pastor, I didn't tell you I got over it. I told you God took me through it. Do you understand the difference? You can't get over it. You You can't act like it's not there. You can, but you're just living in denial. And, and what that means is it's just going to keep taking you. It's just going to, it's going to just ruin and wreck your life because the only way through it is by faith. Listen, even if you have a strong faith, each ongoing battle is a test of faith. Job lost seemingly everything that was near and dear to him as well as all that he had attained in life. Later, Job's faith is tested even more when his body is covered in these, in these boils. These painful boils, uh, many believe that, that were, were um, likely uh, leprosy. And, 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 and normally, uh, from my understanding, um, with what he had, it was, it was perceived by others that that meant that um, that was a price you were paying because of, of, of your sins and, and, and the way that you were living. And, and, and Job felt so bad that he said death would be much easier. He's like, man, I'd I'd be much better off, God, if you just took me. Listen, you know you're in a bad place when you wish you were any place but here. Okay? And and, and if that's you, I'm especially talking to you. You're the the biggest reason why I just just got to lean in on this message and, 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 and give you words of hope because you're not the only person to feel that. A lot of people in this culture, it's weekly, weekly that I'm dealing with people that are just so low, they just don't know how much further they can go. And really, that just gets, that motivates me, honestly. I'm just like, you know what? If, if, if I can just help one more. God, if you can just help one more. See, we're just the instruments. We're just the instruments. But God does. We are his hands and feet. I hope you know that. I hope you know that you have, this ain't even no message notes. I hope you know those of you that right now don't find yourself in that low of a place that you have a responsibility by God to care about people who need somebody to care. You know, every now and then, again, this didn't hit me that way to first service. Every now and then you just need to be reminded of your why. Listen, I would not be a pastor and I would not go to a church if all we were doing is gathering for services. I could, I could care less about any of that. Any of you that know me, you know that. I'm just, and listen, this is a pastor's kid saying that. I can't stand church, but I love being a church. Uh, listen, we got to be unselfish. We got to learn how to walk through faith through our junk so we can help other people through their junk. Do you hear me? That's where the strength comes from. Every piece of faith that I have came from crawling, came from me having to, to have the same exact ponderings that Job felt himself. Many of you know that um, that two-thirds of my body is um, nerve damaged, and you hear that a lot. But the reason you hear that is because that's my story. 
and I'm not past it. I just get through it. And so every day is facing me, every day. It's the reason I, I've sat down since 2015 to preach. Usually if I'm standing up to preach to you, I'm either doing your wedding or unfortunately I'm preaching somebody in your family's funeral. But I learned what I learned in the, in the alley. Do you hear me? Don't, don't mistake my tears for fears. The, listen, the devil hates it when you can cry and still smile inside. The devil hates it when you get to a certain point where you truly believe in your heart that God can take you through anything. It doesn't make you invincible, but it makes you capable of, of being a vessel that he can use at all times because you're not focused on what you don't have or what you did have. You're focused on what God is doing and what God wants to do. And, 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 and some of you just need to know that, that, that the deepest, darkest stuff that you're going through, first of all, is the very reason we're even seeing each other eye to eye because you probably wouldn't have been here. But it is the very thing that God plans to use as the catalyst to give you the rest of your life strong, strong purpose. You can't get there any other way. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 says, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. These trials will, will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as, as fire test and, and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith has been tested and remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. I was, uh, after I had my first back surgery, um, eight days after my surgery, I still couldn't, couldn't walk eight to ten feet by myself. And I became really, really concerned because I had been at a hospital several days and, and they were supposed to start physical therapy very quickly. And, but, but the more that I could not walk because I was cut in the front and back. I always tell people I had an A, B, and C section. Nothing against you ladies. But when somebody cuts, when, when somebody takes your back muscles and they take your stomach muscles, I can tell you firsthand, you ain't going nowhere, okay? You can run. Well, you can run in your mind. You, ain't, you barely can be able to walk, okay? And so I get home, and I'm real worried about it. And, and, and fortunately, I knew enough about health care that um, – I was able to seek out and get, 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 on, get, get a home health therapist that would come out to me, and he came out to me for a couple months. And, um, and, and he would tell me what I could and what I couldn't do. He said, what you can't do is you can't try to walk without this, um, you know, walker. I said, okay. I said, well, how far can I walk? He said, as far as your legs will walk. I said, well, how do I get where I'm trying to get? He said, sometimes all you can do is walk through the pain. And I've never forgotten that. Sometimes all you can do is walk through the pain. Well, fast forward a month or two months later, I was pushing that walk around going two miles a day. And, and I was just out walking, and, and, and God's like, listen, I'm taking you on a faith walk. I'm taking you on a faith walk. And, and the thing that, that, that I realized now looking back was, you know how all of a sudden when God gives you something or tells you something, you get excited and you think that you think you're in the fourth quarter of that battle, okay? You think it's about over, but what you didn't know was you were just at the beginning, okay? And so the process doesn't happen as quickly as you thought it was going to happen. And you got to, listen, you got to keep walking by faith, not by sight, not by feelings. And that's all I did to get where I am today. That's the only reason I didn't quit the ministry. That's the only reason why I've gotten to continue going on because I've realized that God is greater than your greatest fear, your greatest feelings. And even if you're limited, he's never limited. God's not limited by your limitation, by the way. He's not limited by your battle. Sometimes we think, God, if you'll just remove this battle, then, then I can get on with your will. What if the battle is critical to you living in his will? I believe it is. I believe that the battle is one of life's greatest blessings because I will acknowledge to you that 
that I didn't know truly how to humble myself before the Lord until God squeezed every ounce of me out. He squeezed the pride. He squeezed the self-dependence. He squeezed the, the old me and the old way completely out to where all I could do was, if I was to go forward, is to free fall. Is to go, Lord, take me by the hand, lead me. I'm going to follow you wherever. And I'm telling you, I'm yet to see that not be enough. I'm yet to see. All I, all I focus on each day is, God, I'm trying to put my little hand in your big hand and let you guide me to the next step. And what I've seen as a result is breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. You can have questions and still have certainty and peace about God's will. Just believing and knowing that, that he knows more than you. He sees beyond you. But fourthly, ongoing battles, they can grow your faith further. Ongoing battles can grow your faith further. Hardships are God's greatest fertilizers when it comes to your faith. Don't ask God to remove all the hardships in your life because if the hardships are removed out of your life, you will not be spiritually fit. Because we need the battles to keep us on our knees. We need the battles to keep us humble. We need the battles to grow and stretch our faith. Now, believe it or not, and I've been abiding by this for about eight years now, I'm not supposed to lift anything more than five pounds. And so y'all can see me right now with them big old five-pound dumbbells at home doing that. My biceps has gotten so bad, I don't, I don't even do my biceps in public because they're going the other way now. See, and y'all are laughing at me. Please keep that on video, Trey, so that I can show the world. Y'all wait till Facebook gets a hold of y'all. I'm putting it on everything. I'm not even on TikTok, but it's going there. Be like, listen, this is how Christians act. It's terrible. They'll be like, yeah, that's exactly how them church people are. Y'all know good and well. They have so much fun with it. We might try that, Trey. Where was I? I'm being serious. What did I say last? Believe it or not, I actually had a purpose for, the, for that, and that's this. If I'm exercising regularly, I'm at least gaining some strength. I'm at least staying in shape. At the very worst, I'm not losing ground. But when I quit exercising, I lose the health that I had. Not only do I not gain, I regress. When you do not have uh, spiritual habits in your life in place and walking in step with him, step by step by step, looking to his word, fellowshipping with his people, seeking to, to keep pressing through, keep learning new things and keep seeking God's will, you, you, you will regress. Listen, further into Job's suffering, he began to see things differently. And I want you to notice, he saw things differently before he experienced his greatest breakthrough. He realized that even though he had questions, God had a plan. Job 42, 1 through 6 says, Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You asked, Who is, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about, things far too wonderful for me. You said, Listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I want to reread that. I, I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. Listen, until, until you got a battle that keeps you down long enough where you, have, you only can see forward by faith, you don't really know how to live it out. You just know some facts. You just know some information. Surrender leads to transformation. Verse 6 says, I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. What is Job doing here? He's saying, God, I still got questions, but I'm sorry if I ever um, question you. I'm sorry if, if, if I'm not seeing things quite like you see it, and I'm losing faith and, and losing hope or being so discouraged by this. He thought he had great faith before, but once everything was, once the training wheels were taken away from his um, faith bike, 
and he had to actually walk with faith, that's when he came to know him. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. By the way, that's not the case for everybody, because some people, even after they are in hell of, of a battle, they still continue to do things the same way they always did it. But those who are pressing forward with faith, it says, faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The battle you've been, for, been through before help prepare you for the battle that you're going through now. And the battle that you're going through now will prepare you for the battles that he has for you later or for the ministry that he has for you later. Listen, Satan wants to wreck your faith. Jesus wants to grow your faith. Every day, God's trying to grow you and me one step further. I wrote this down, that while Job didn't understand his suffering at the time and why this ongoing battle was, was, wasn't over yet, his faith began to grow. He recognized by faith that God was still God. He asked God to forgive him of his questioning him. He chose to keep trusting God through all the suffering Believing that God had a plan, even if all he could feel was misery at the time. But last but not least today, number five, ongoing battles, they can all be overcome in Christ. Ongoing battles can all be overcome in Christ. Sometimes, depending on the battle, we think to ourselves, but not this one. Philippians 4.13 says, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. See, if you look at things through your eyes, no, you can't. But if you're talking about what God can do and Christ can do in you, despite you, he can. You know, Jesus said it many a time. He's like, listen, this or that is, is impossible for man, but with God, all things are possible. One, one of your first steps of, of getting where you need to get is believing that God can. Okay? Believing that God can and that God will give me the strength to get through whatever life throws my way. Because nothing takes him by surprise. Listen, Satan wants to make you feel hopeless. Jesus wants to help you feel and be victorious. Romans 8.37 says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Deuteronomy 24 says, for the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies and he will give you victory. Jeremiah 119 in the Amplified Bible, it says they will fight against you, but they will not ultimately prevail over you. For I am with you always to protect you and deliver you, says the Lord. Proverbs 21, 31 in the Message Bible. I love how it says this. It says, do your best, prepare for the worst, then trust God to bring the victory. Do your best, prepare for the worst, then trust God to bring the victory. How many of you have learned that, that, that you need to expect adversity every day? You need to expect to, to, to every week to be surprised by something. Something that God's not surprised by, but you can be surprised by. You've heard me say this before, that God's taught me over time that faith is this, doing everything you can while trusting God for everything you can. I woke up this morning, God was like, listen, this is how it is, Craig, with the church. Some are going to plant, some are going to water, but I'm going to bring the growth. Some of you, 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 you have no idea what God has ahead for you. You have no idea if you continue to press through. One of the best parts of Job is he never quit seeking to follow God by faith. And as a result, time would prove that God would bless his socks off. Look at this, Job 42, 10 through 17. It says, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. For now, he had 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. Job lived 140 years after that. 
living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died an old man who had lived a long, full life. Listen, Scripture is very clear that for those who are in Christ, nothing is possible and all things will and can be overcome. One of the reasons why some of you can expect the the second part of your life to be greater than the first is because the first part of your life, you weren't seeking the Lord. But it's going to be a game changer if you decide from this point forward, you're going to follow the Lord because then you can experience God-sized things. Then you can experience God-sized peace and purpose in your life. And some of you don't even know that's what you're missing. You're missing, you're missing what God has for you because the battle is just consuming you. Job's testimony still speaks to countless souls today as we read about his suffering, but we also hear about his victory. First Chronicles 5.20 says, they, they cried out to God during the battle, and he answered their prayer because they trusted him. Would you bow your heads with me today? Dear Heavenly Father, God, right now, Lord, I pray, Lord, that I and others listening to me right now would choose to trust you through the battle with the battle, with the battle's past, present, and future. Lord, may we allow you to use the battle, Lord, one, to draw us closer to you, Lord, two, to, to expand our faith to new heights, and Lord, thirdly, to, to use us as vessels and examples of what you can do, not what we've done, but what you've done. Lord, I pray that every person, Lord, right now, would choose to surrender everything to you, would choose to believe that you can help them overcome anything they are facing and anything that they will face. Lord God, I pray for anyone that's not yet giving their heart and life to Christ. I pray today would be the day, Lord, that they would believe in your son, Jesus Christ, in his death on the cross for their sins on his resurrection from the grave. Lord, giving them the, the chance, Lord, to, to, to have eternal hope and forgiveness of sin. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that, that if, if someone doesn't know Jesus today, they would say, Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. God, we give you every battle that we have going on. And Lord, help us to, to trust you to choose to trust you, Lord. Lord, sometimes trust is not a feeling, it's a choice. Help us to trust you and to know that you who began a good work in us will continue that work until the day of Christ Jesus. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. This altar is open. Would you stand with us? I'm available here should you want to come speak with me or me pray with you.